All right, now to the roadmap for reopening California. Starting in Yuba and Sutter counties, where officials made a bold move this week, bucking the governor and easing restrictions beyond state recommendations. As our reporter Giacomo Luca found out, the state is now leveraging its power to rein those counties in. Yuba and Sutter counties jointly eased restrictions beyond state guidelines Monday, sparking strong words from California's governor. They're making a big mistake. They're putting their public at risk. They're putting our progress at risk. But county officials stand by that decision. This new order really looked at what fit well for our communities. The state showed teeth Tuesday after alcohol beverage control officials visited some local businesses with warnings. Pete's restaurant and brew house in Yuba City got one after reopening for dine-in. If we do stay at this state, employees are going to lose their job. Employees are going to get less hours. And Manager Chris Crashy says employees are wearing masks and gloves, sanitizing areas and limiting seating for proper physical distancing. Still, the ABC is asking licensed businesses to close dine-in areas until the state says it's safe to reopen. ABC officials say they're asking for voluntary compliance, but say they can enforce it. Our reporter Giacomo Luca on the story. It's not clear what that law enforcement will look like, but the Alcohol Beverage Control Department does oversee and issue state liquor licenses. So businesses are worried they could lose their liquor license if they defy the governor. County officials say businesses should proceed with caution if they reopen. And today we're expecting to learn more about phase two of reopening our state, which begins tomorrow. The governor set to lay out more guidance for how businesses are allowed to reopen industries will be allowed to move with adaptation and modifications into this second phase. The governor is talking about low risk businesses like clothing stores, sporting goods stores and florists. They'll be allowed to reopen as soon as tomorrow. Good news in Sacramento County. Health officials say it's gone down two consecutive days. No new deaths from the virus. The death toll stands at 47. All of them were people ages 65 and older who did have underlying health issues. More than half of those deaths are in the city of Sacramento. And now free testing is available to people living in Sacramento County 18 and up. Our reporter Carlos Herrera at Cal Expo with everything you need to know. Yeah, well, actual tests will be taken here at Cal Expo, but there are a few things you need to do before you come down here, and they're all done online. So all you need is your cell phone and your computer. Let's show you. First, you'll need to register and fill out a survey through projectbaseline.com. The website looks like this. You'll scroll down and hit I acknowledge in the bottom. Then sign in with your Google email account. If you don't have one, you need to create one. Once you're signed in, you'll review your authorization. The form gives you information about the process. You'll then confirm you're 18 or older. Then click next to complete the screener with some basic information like name, birth date, and home address. That's when you'll be directed to make an appointment. We hope you take advantage uh, of not only going to this site, uh, but getting your zip code inputted and then potentially the extent you wish uh, making a reservation. If you don't live in Sacramento County, you don't have to worry. There are other options out there for you. The California Department of Public Health just released a new tool to help find a test site near you. You go to the interactive map on arcgis.com, put in your address, and it'll connect you to a location. These are the sites that the state has contracted that are proximate. And you'll basically follow the same steps to register. It's easy and only takes two minutes to complete. Once you're tested, the county says you should get the results back in one or two days. For now, I'll send it back over to you. Carlos, thank you very much. What else is it today? It's the big day of giving a 24 hour movement that helps the community raise funds for Sacramento region nonprofits. Our Zach Fuentes has more on how you can give and who can benefit. It's an online based fundraiser and if you're able to, it's actually pretty easy to donate. When you head to bigdayofgiving.org, you'll see hundreds of nonprofits. Each link you click on gives a description of what they do and how your dollars can help them out. It gives the community a chance to support the big name nonprofits that do great work in the community and also the smaller ones you may not have heard about yet. Placer Food Bank distributes food to 70 smaller nonprofits. They're now going to receive hundreds of thousands of pounds of perishable food each month from the USDA and Feeding America. They just need to get refrigeration for it. A big Day of Giving is a wonderful opportunity for the community to know about our urgent need for refrigeration. So the dollars we're raising is going to help with that need. And that's only one organization that Big Day of Giving can help support. I'll introduce you to another one coming up. 
So again, if you're able to, be sure to check out bigdayofgiving.org. We'll have a link to it at abc10.com. Zach, thank you. Join ABC 10 and the United Way. We try to help those most affected by the coronavirus outbreak. Donate now at abc10.com slash COVID relief. The ABC 10 app or text COVID UW to 41444. Another attempt to block financial aid to undocumented immigrants in California has been shot down yesterday. The Supreme Court denied a second bid to stop the governor's $75 million plan to help over 150,000 immigrants struggling during the crisis. The program would give these adults $500 since they don't qualify for the federal stimulus payments. And an update now to a story developing out of Rancho Cordova, which made headlines coast to coast. I was hurt. I was really hurt. I was devastated. My heart hurts for the family. My heart hurts for that young man who was traumatized. That's community activist Duante Clark calling for that Rancho Cordova deputy to be fired and charged after he was caught on tape punching a 14-year-old boy. Devante Clark lost his brother Stefan in a shooting involving police. He says this incident speaks to a larger societal problem. The way he treated that little boy as if he didn't even care the camera was there. He had no care at all that he was being recorded. Uncalled for, unnecessary, um, excessive force. Deputies say the violent encounter started over tobacco. The teen's family is calling for the officer to be fired, then charged with child abuse, assault, and endangerment. 